Craig Robertson specialises in photographing food for editorial and advertising clients. The following interview took place at his house in South London, where I wanted to ask him about his career and thoughts on the industry. I'm predominantly editorial. Probably over 90% of my work is editorial. Uh, I do a lot of, I do a, a, the other 10% is below the line advertising or point of sale. Um, generally big supermarket stuff, they're, they're the biggest employers, they, they churn through the images so they need food photographers quite a lot, it's quite good. Um, but I do enjoy editorial, that's how I see myself, I see myself as an editorial photographer. Luckily the advertising now is moving towards much more of an editorial feel and a look so it's a much more natural environment for us to move into uh, for someone like myself. And, um, but till then it was, it was far more exacting and um, myself personally I like to be a little bit freer. I like well to, obviously with editorial work you yes. get more freedom to do what you want to do. And how would you describe your style, you know, your photography style when you're shooting food? I think my editorial style is it's um, I try to have a very make it look very relaxed. I try not I try to make it look very natural available light. I I use a mixture of lighting styles. I may use daylight but I don't tend to use daylight that much. I prefer to have uh, use flash or use uh, tungstens or, or fluorescence, but I always try to make them look as if it's daylight. But I like the controllability of a light source as opposed to using daylight where you the whims of the weather. And um, we, we're not blessed with a consistent daylight <laughs> light source in this country. So, we have, so the best thing to do is to fake it and make it look as natural as possible. Does it help having your own studio to, to work from? I mean, as a food photographer, would you say it's essential? It does help a lot. I don't think it's essential anymore. A uh, lot of food photographers uh, don't have their own studios now. Uh, it used to be a requirement that you had to have it, but uh, it definitely helps if you have your own studio, just for the sheer fact that we tend to have all our own kit. We don't rent, we don't rent kit in because it's, it's not perceived to be part of the expenses. Um, so our fee has to cover all expenses. So you tend to find that uh, you accumulate your own kit. And what about all the props easier. and accessories and things like that? Uh, you don't need props. The prop stylists deliver props for every single job, so there's no need to keep a collection. I do. I myself like to have a little bit of a support mm -hmm. network of props behind me that I can cherry pick from. Um, but uh, it definitely does help. It, it's it's because it, you. You, build, you need a kitchen, which is probably the most important thing. And uh, if you've got your own studio, you know you've got the kitchen and all the equipment there. If you use a higher studio, you turn up, it may have a kitchen. Well, obviously it'll have to be if you're a food photographer, but it may not have the kit. And then for somebody who doesn't know, you know how a food shoot works, you know, so can you explain the process? I mean, who, what sort of people are involved? You know, what sort of team do you work with when you so produce a food shoot? On, a, on an average, food shoot there's probably three to four people involved there's the the prop stylist who generally just they, they go out get the props they deliver them uh, leave them set out and uh, that their their job is done then they never stay around for the shoot we have a food stylist they probably may have an assistant to help them through they'll uh, be myself the photographer who may have an assistant and uh, the client who's either the art director or the designer and it grows depending on the type of job you're doing. Basic editorial, it'll be three of us left in the studio, photographer, food stylist, client. So the food stylist is obviously key because you know, they're yes. producing. Yes, the, without the food the stylist, we're, we're nothing. <laughs> and um, I better ask if you have any favorite food stylists that you like working with. I'd better say my wife, yes, who was uh, who's a very good food stylist. And, and, um, Yes, you always have, you have your gang of food stylists that you do like to work with because it's it's, it's about building relationships. Uh, it's about somebody who thinks the same way as you, and uh, be, especially if you like a particular style of how you like your food to be done, whether it's much more casual, more relaxed, which, as I said, is uh, my favourite style. Um, you need food stylists who think in the same way, and uh, once you know them, you you prefer to stick with them. 
And the commissions that you get, are they commissions that are just for a single day shoot or do you get long term projects that go on longer? Uh, magazines tend to be one, two day shoots, um, books, anything from five to 25 day shoots. And these are obviously in advance of the seasons that you're shooting for as well. Indeed, we're probably shooting about four months ahead, mm. which uh, it's always fun doing Christmas in the, in the hottest day of the year. So I suppose that we're recording this in August, so therefore you must be shooting your Christmas. Christmas is nearly done. Christmas is nearly is that, over. Okay, all right. I think all the turkeys have been possibly cooked, but can be cooked. <laughs> so uh, yes, yeah, so now we're we're heading towards uh, in about the next the next month or so we'll be. We're looking at uh, February, gen generally Easter kind of times, the next big season, but to be in the next month or so. And of course, not, not all your work is in the studio either, so you get to shoot uh, on location, I notice. Yes. You've got uh, shoots that take you to restaurants or even sort of trips abroad and doing different cuisine. So, you know, yeah. is that a nice feature of the job? Uh, that's, that's probably my favourite feature of the job. I do love going on location. Um, well, it's just nice be nosy, go to new places, it's nice to see everything, it's nice to try the food, it's nice to go to a, in a restaurant and have the chance to taste this chef's food and it's lovely to go abroad and taste, taste, taste other cuisines, so that's the foodiness coming in. Uh, but um, but I, I, I love the location, because you're not, you've let out of your safety net, you're not in the studio, you haven't got everything that you'd wish to be there, I like a little bit of uncontrollability. I like the, uh, the I like the surprises that get thrown up, and the challenge of trying to get round them as quick as you can because you don't have any time to stop and mull over it. It's much faster. So. And then, as well as that, you also get to photograph people. Um, you know, you, I mean, looking at your website, for example, I see that you photograph everything from kids to chefs. Although I suppose yes. you might argue that they're one and the same, perhaps. Uh, I mean, any, do you enjoy doing that kind of work? Um, I do, I'm, I'm starting to re really love doing the, uh, the, the, the portraits and shooting people. I used to, be, I used to do quite a lot of um, the lifestyle food shoots and we're too much more relaxed, but now I'm finding myself being drawn off or, or finding myself in being booked to shoot much more formal portraits of, of chefs. And uh, I'm actually quite, that's a whole new challenge to me. So I'm, I find that quite exciting. What about specific um, examples? I mean, people that you photographed, I mean, how did, you know, any particular standout memories um, that you can talk about? That I can talk about. Uh, the Michael P. Wyatt was, uh, that was interesting because basically he's, uh, he has a restaurant on one of the uh, p cru cruise ships. So that was, Three days on a cruise ship, going from from the south of England, Plymouth, I believe, uh, and going to the, going to the Med. Thinking fantastic, nice little trip around the Med. Now we got off at the first stop. We just had the three days of the ship getting there. Uh, tried to do a shoot whilst feeling seasick. Tried to do um, portrait shoots of a chef who obviously didn't really want us to be there. Um, it was quite fun. I got. Uh, I got uh, some nice pictures of him, even though he really didn't want to do it. Because it's changed a lot when you think mm. about how celebrity chefs have risen from, like, there were no TV programmes, no. or very few programmes when we were perhaps growing up, younger, as, as younger kids, yeah. uh, that were about food. Maybe the Galloping Gourmet, which will mean absolutely <laughs> nothing to a lot of other people. Maybe if you're of a certain yeah. generation, you'll know who we mean. But, um, no, I mean, the TV programmes, the, the, the TV channels are just... Litter with oh, yes, food so programs about food, so it's, there's a lot more interest now as, in food as, as yes. a subject, and also the personal lives of the, of the, of the chefs. I think there is. They've, they've, they've become the way. I heard somebody say it's the new rock and roll, but in in in, in essence, I suppose it is to a certain extent. They're, they're, well, they're, they're famous. They're everything rock and roll, rock and roll yeah. except rock and roll. Uh, but, uh, so that the, the, everybody knows them. Every, the people in the street all know who these people are. And five years ago, maybe a few would have. Ten years ago, definitely nobody would have really been aware on the street who these people were. And uh, I suppose that's a, that's a good thing for me. I've got more people to shoot. I've got more things to shoot. But uh, I think the public's much more aware of everything. I think the public's far more visually aware. And people are really aware of food. 
and subsequently the, the chefs would go along with it. Tell me, which jobs so far that you've done would you consider to be your favourites? Um, I think definitely the book Pie, which was uh, a book written by my wife, probably because we had complete control. Uh, we, Angela and the designer had taken this proposal to a publisher. They said, fantastic, we can run with it. And we just did as we pleased. We weren't interrupted. We created what I believe is some fantastic shots, which still years down the line, um, shots on my website, which people consistently pull out and book me because of. So it's just been the book that keeps on giving. And that's quite, that's quite nice. Um, another one is that quite a lot of location shoots tend to be my favorites. Uh, we went to the Isle of Wight to um, a campsite. We just had uh, Airstream caravans. Um, we did a shoot there and we, tur we turned up and it was the most abysmal weather when we arrived there and we, was, we were staying the night over in the caravans. Uh, and then the next day it was just the most glorious sunshine. It was the most fantastic day and it just all went perfectly. So that stuck in my mind as being a, a really, just had a nice time. It was a nice day, it all worked. It went from being possibly it could be a nightmare job to being a fantastic job. So that's always stayed with me. Looking at the photography industry as a whole and where we are at the moment and the recession that we've just been through, which apparently we're coming out of some say. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> oops, there was a pig just flying mm. overhead. Um, do you see a bright future for the industry at the moment? I think. Uh, I'm not sure it's bright, but then I don't want to be negative. There's, uh, there's still work out there. Uh, I think the, 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 when we get out of the recession, uh, hopefully it'll build back up again. I don't think it's... Uh, I think clients have taken the opportunity of, of use, they use the re recession to cut back on, on what they pay photographers. They, they expect twice as much in a day. And, the fees are going down. My fees have been consistently going down for the last few years. Is this just an editorial? Or this is this is, well? this is an editorial, um, and even they, as I said, the, the advertisement I do, they want they want more for less, and uh, which is quite difficult to, to justify because our overheads have gone up, studio overheads gone up, uh, every other overheads gone up. Yeah, your equipment has exponentially gone up in cost. Um, As somebody once said, pixels are free once you've paid for the digital camera and the computer and all the yeah. software that you need to go with it. Yeah. Yes, exactly. Being able to, to retouch and step from, from when I shot, used to shoot transparency all the time, that, that point of where now thinking that I'm shooting neg and then I'm going to print it by, by, by processing it in the computer, is uh, for somebody who, I'd, you know, I, I love creating images, that's why I'm a photographer. Uh, to be able to tweak and adjust and and and, and add a new level to it, that, that's uh, that's the nice part of digital. That's a fantastic part. It's an interesting part. Well, thanks very much for talking to me. Thank you. Thank you.